This episode of All the Things Sorta of Truth is brought to you by our friend and our patron, Sarah Gallagher. Now, she's a lot like her favorite character, Zed, in the way that she's always hungry. I mean, for more content, that is. And she can always appreciate a witty joke. She thinks Michael from the first book was a little bitch, and she thinks we're hilarious. So, obviously, she's just as smart as Zed is, too. You can't ask for more than that. Thanks, Sarah. All right, on with the show. Welcome back to All the Things Sort of Truth, the alcohol-fueled chapter-by-chapter reread of the Sort of Truth series with a quiver full of craft brew on the side. I'm Jade. And I'm Nate. And we are going to be getting into Chapter 6 of Stone of Tears on today's episode. Yes, we are. And there is a shitload to get through. Uh, I know this chapter is over an hour long, so we're going to get right into it. We don't fuck around here on the on the Sort of Truth podcast. Unless we want to. Or we're drinking, which is every episode. Yeah. Hmm. Well. I didn't really think about that before I started talking. I'm a backtrack. <laughs> it's okay. You can't edit it out. Mm-hmm. That's true. You can't edit audio. Once okay. we record it, it's, it's permanently laid down that way. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which is why, I mean, you know that we're perfect because we never have mistakes in our episodes yeah you guys have never heard one mistake ever at all in the history of the show so and that's just how they're recorded (laughs) (laughs) yeah i feel this bit's gone on long enough (laughs) (laughs) more proof of us being perfect yeah all that is you know every single person listening to this right now is like bullshit guys come on (laughs) you know you know so chapter opens richard and kaylin are Gliding through the sky on a dragon, and Kaylin is not having a super great time. I love the way that Richard is like, isn't it great? It's like a bucket of water when you flip it upside down and the water stays in the bucket. And Kaylin is getting queasy, just like, fuck off. It is nowhere near as cool as even that. Yeah. This is awful. Yeah, we're not going to talk until we land. I'm good. (laughs) She's like, why does it have to go sideways every time it turns? We get this on a plane when you take off. Yeah, banking. Yeah, you look out the window, and it's the ground, and you're like, oh, we're sideways right now. (laughs) I don't really have an issue with flying, but I get where she's coming from. I get terrible motion sickness, you know that. Yeah, yes. (laughs) So, yeah, I understand. (laughs) We'd probably be close to the same. Yeah. (laughs) So, they're about to land in the middle of the village, and everyone's probably gonna gonna freak out. Because last time a dragon landed in the village... There was Dark and Rawl and the fire and the death and the, the kidnapping. Right. All the super <laughs> awesome things that happened last time Richard visited the mud people. Speaking of kidnapping, in this book, Jim Dale is the narrator. And we're just going to point out, like, point for Jim Dale. He actually says sit in the right yep. way. In this way, he has absolved himself of the kind of soulless reading of the book <laughs> i mean slightly because he also says savidlin he says it weird savidlin yeah, yeah like that but i like i like the sit-in thing we'll give him credit for that <laughs> yeah so as they're landing richard puts sit-in like on his shoulders and starts waving him around at least I imagine he's waving him around a little bit. Like, hey, look at the child. <laughs> now, are they on the ground when they do that? Or are they still coming in, but like flying low? Because I pictured Rafiki in Lion King when he's holding Simba up. <laughs> like, it's the baby. But Richard is also standing on the back of a flying dragon while doing so. <laughs> and I mean, <laughs> I don't even know what words you would use for that. But fucking epic. Epic, but also I feel like I would be pissed if that was my child. Like, you're not, no, you're bringing him back. Don't risk his life by waggling him all over the place while you're standing in the back of a goddamn dragon. Right. You got him this close. Don't you dare fucking drop that kid now. <laughs> but yeah, he he's basically yelling out, I have your fucking kid. Don't shoot. And Kaylin is translating this like, hey, I'm Richard to the Birdman. Because Richard isn't sure if the Birdman recognizes him from a couple weeks ago or not. I don't know. It was a weird introduction to him. 
this chapter is a lot of recap of the last book again. Well, it hasn't been that long since they were here the last time. It's only been a couple of weeks. Sidden has been gone for probably a month or two, we figure. Yeah. But Richard and Kaylin didn't leave that long ago. So it would stand to reason that the Birdman would still recognize Richard. Yeah, he should. I think the main part here was that they were on a fucking dragon. That would make you worry just a bit. Don't shoot the dragon. Don't shoot the child. We're cool. Just don't just don't shoot anybody. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> so the family is reunited and it was like a, a sweet little moment. I, you know, as a mother was like, oh, if I had my baby back after that long, I would I would be a fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jade sobs at almost any Disney movie. <laughs> I won't even say that. It's every Disney movie. It is. Um, she would be unconsolable, which, I mean, makes sense. Like you're saying, yeah, if you just got your child back, you would be sobbing. And I feel like you would very much be the same way. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be yelling a lot. Like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yelling and crying. People <laughs> would think I was dying, but it would. it's like. I'm I'm dying in a good way. <laughs> but also, you wouldn't be able to understand one goddamn word oh, you're no. saying. Because oh, no. it would be through the sobs and racking tears. You would know what I was <laughs> saying, <though. laughs> Yes, baby. I'm sorry. Yep. And, and my son would hate it. Yeah, that's just how it would be. <laughs> He'd be like, yeah, I'm back. Can I play Fortnite now? <laughs> <laughs> Get off me. When's lunch? <laughs> Also, my kid is a little older than Sid and now, so he he's not as cute and cuddly either. <laughs> <Right>. so. <laughs> so at this point, it's said that Richard has a really, really bad headache. But in the midst of bringing Sid and back, they have to greet Savidlin, and the Birdman is there, and they do the face slapping thing, which I'm sure is awesome when you have a migraine. <laughs> you would instantly be pissed off at anybody who said hello to you. Like, it's bad enough when people just say hi and you have a real bad headache. They literally get hit in the face. Yeah. No fucking thank you. <laughs> but I also feel like, I don't know, maybe we should just do it on the arm or something. Like, you mean like a high five? Yeah, but like um, the harder I, I high five you, the more I respect your strength. <laughs> yeah, I mean, cool. They could have. We talked about this. They could have secret handshakes. Yeah, they could. Secret hard slap, secret handshakes. Yeah, I, I'm gonna slap you two times, then you slap me three. It'll be great. <laughs> Richard brags a little about his dragon lady friend, and then lets them know that she helped kill Darkin. And he tells her that the Birdman's whistle helped save her baby. So they all decide to be friends, and then everybody jumps around and cheers like a peanut movie. Yeah, you said with their heads back, doing the rocking yeah. thing from side to side, and they're all like, yay, we're friends! Yeah. Well, it must have been a really tense moment when the dragon is like, you want me to eat these motherfuckers or light them on fire? And all the mud people are like, should we shoot the dragon? What's going on here? So Richard has to be like, look, you guys have already helped each other. We're good. And yeah. then, like you said, the aforementioned Peanuts gang dance, yeah. <laughs> which was very cartoony. Everybody yeah. at one time just goes, yay. OK, on with business. Yeah. <laughs> A small group of hunters, though, in the corner are like pouting and being all surly about it. And Kaylin notices this and realizes that one of the men that is with them is the man who said Richard was bringing trouble when they first got there the last time. And as it turns out, this guy's uncle was Tofala. Yeah. So when Kaylin killed Toph, she was really, like, sticking a knife in this guy's, like, hate box. Yeah, <laughs> it's hate box. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that located? I'm not sure. That just popped out of my mouth. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's brilliant. I love it. Hate box. <laughs> so Richard is completely oblivious to all this going on. He tells the Birdman, uh, you were fucking wrong about me being totally hopeless with that bird whistle and it never helping me. By the way, uh, I'm great at everything, just like I said. <laughs> yeah, see, I can do everything. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck your lesson, right? <laughs> then he offers him uh, a ride on Scarlet, just like, eh, it's okay, though. Like, you could be wrong. Let's go. <laughs> One thing it does say here that... I don't think it's said in the last book, but obviously we don't use the Birdman's name. Nope. He's got to have a name, but they just call him the Birdman. 
They call him the Birdman because he loves things that fly, mm-hmm. like in general. I don't know. I guess at this point, it's weird that they don't call him by his name. Especially when everybody in the village has such unique names. Right. Everybody there has a unique name that Terry thought of. And these are all very, for lack of better words, unique. Yeah. Um, But the other thing that stuck out here is that, okay, the Birdman likes things that fly. Birds... He's probably freaked out over a dragonfly because they look fucking awesome while they're floating around. You know what I mean? He can appreciate things like that. Dragons, big difference. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And as much as you might like things that fly, that would be scary. Friends or no. Yeah. Do you think that the bird man was called bird boy when he was little? (laughs) They couldn't get him to pay attention. Like, hey, hey, bird boy. Just yeah. stares up at the trees all day. <laughs> yeah. You're never going to make anything of yourself. Yeah. You're not paying attention at all. You're no help. And now here he is, like yeah. the, the, the highest elder. <laughs> Bird boy, get away from those fucking chickens and come over here. <laughs> <laughs> so as Richard and the Birdman fly away on the dragon to take a little jaunt, Kaylin asks Savidlin who that dude is that's so pissy. And he tells her it's Chandelin. He is the nephew of Toph, like we found out, and he definitely still blames Richard for Darkin and everything that came with him. Right. I mean, it's not good that obviously he doesn't fucking like Richard and Kaylin at all, but you can't really blame him either. Like, even if Richard is a good guy to him, he doesn't have to be super happy about seeing him again. Yeah, actually, that was one of the points here in a minute. That I had too. Like, I don't blame this guy for not accepting Richard and Kaylin as mud people because we kind of talked about this in the last book. They manipulated the fuck out of the mud people to get that position, like, for their benefit. Oh, yeah. And most of the village went along with it and were fine and were like, cool, this is great. I'm not really surprised that there's at least one or two people who, especially after Richard left, got together and were like, that was fucked, right? <laughs> <laughs> Like, traditions and everything right out the window for this asshole? (laughs) Yeah, over and over and over. (laughs) But Kaylin is not about to let this guy ruin shit for her at this point. She's come so far. She didn't think she was ever going to be able to love anybody. She's got Richard. He's just not going to mess up her good shit right now. So she's going to march over there and handle it. Kaylin walks up to Shandlin and does what we all know and love, how the mud people say hello, slaps him in the face. Instead of slapping her back, he spits on the ground, which is a very deliberate fuck you. Yeah. That's middle finger rockets all day long. Yeah. It, it kind of means, like, you're not worth me showing you your respect. Yeah. They do explain that it doesn't mean he doesn't respect her, but it means that he's not willing to show her in front of everybody that he does have respect for her. And Kaylin tries to convince him that, they're, look, we're on the same side. We know some bad shit happened, but, like, we are friends, and he's stubborn. He's not fucking having it. It's kind of weird at this moment, because Kaylin is down there dealing with the tension of everything that happened, and Richard and the Birdman are just flying around on a dragon. Yeah, completely unaware. Yeah. (laughs) Giving no fucks, like, woo, look at us go! (laughs) Well, in response to Shandolin basically just being a dick and being like, no, you guys just bring problems, I don't want any part of you. Caitlin's like, okay, okay, I'm going to rescind the respect I gave to you and basically call you a a little baby. You're not a man anymore. Yeah, she kisses her fingers and then touches his cheek where she slapped him, kind of like soothing the place where she slapped him. And that's like erasing the slap to all of the mud people. Yeah. So she's taking her respect back away. And all of Chandelin's dudes were like, ooh, motherfucker. <laughs> Kaylin, at this point, she's like, I'm not going to give you respect. You have to earn it. The other point that's important here is that because Kaylin's doing this, now Chandelin has to earn Kaylin's respect back in front of the whole village. This is a community deal where the elders aren't going to solve this. The other people in the village aren't going to solve this. It's between Kaylin and Chandelin. You don't give respect to somebody who doesn't deserve it. Right. And so Kaylin is like standing on her laurels here in front of the village saying, this guy's being a piece of shit. All of you need to acknowledge this. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, they do. 
Right. And she kind of has to do this because otherwise the people wouldn't really respect her strength anymore because it's it is a show 